So we uh, had seen that the energy inside a cavity um, and inside the cavity we have uh, all this radiation and the radiation has a black body spectrum. Uh, one of the questions last time, uh, last class or last lecture was about whether there's a relationship between matter and the radiation that is, you know, that they tend to have the same um, intensity versus frequency distribution. And the answer is yes, there is a connection. But something that is important to realize, and that question made me realize that maybe not all of you have gotten this. Uh, yes, we have the radiation in a, in a black box. And the black box is a cavity in a reservoir. And there is uh, the reservoir, the material of the reservoir is conductive. And so there's no parallel magnetic field. But all of that is just, you know, a, a construction, uh, the physical part of it, or I guess the matter part of it. The, the black body spectrum is about the radiation, not the matter. So what we have inside the box is not matter, it's radiation. Okay, so then we started looking at a similar case in which instead of having a cavity inside a, a reservoir, we have a, a box, a cube of a solid. Okay, so the atoms are in there and you can propagate waves. And in a way they behave uh, like radiation with some changes that are important. But over here we are focusing on matter. Okay, so we have the two cases, radiation and matter. So the energy inside the cavity or electromagnetic waves was two L over uh, pi cubed, one over eight, or pi integral from zero to infinity, a squared bk, then the expectation value of the energy for all the uh, states n. So when we deal with the solid matter case, crystalline matter, we have three instead of two uh, propagation modes. So for the electromagnetic radiation, we only had the transverse modes. So if the wave is propagating this way, then the electromagnetic field is going to oscillate in this plane. So this one or in this one, but it's not going to oscillate in this direction. For matter, uh, the, the wave, which you can think of as a, as a sound wave, propagates like this. So also in this plane, this plane and this plane, and also this plane, it's gonna propagate like that. Okay, so it can propagate both in the two transverse directions and the longitudinal direction. The other change that we made is that because the separation between atoms is finite, there is a maximum frequency that the, uh, the waves can have. And we said that that was KD. The D stands for the by, the by um, developed slash 
stole this steering. He didn't steal it, but it's so similar to Planck's radiation law that it's kind of embarrassing. And you know, he accepted that. He was like, oh yeah, I just changed those two things. Um, all right. So from this, you know, the if we look at this part only, which is what we did last time, right? so not the energy part of it, then that's the number of particles. And the total number of modes is 3n. Right? So each, like the, the maximum number of waves that can exist in this crystal is three times the number of atoms because each atom in the maximum frequency, uh, at the maximum frequency, they can uh, oscillate in three directions with the wavelength of a maximum energy wave. Okay, so from that, we derived uh, this um, relationship. So this is, I get confused with the ends, but I did it with n anyways. This is the number of nodes, essentially. Um, so it's gonna be six row. This is the number density, so how many atoms you have per volume. I squared cube root of that. And this is equation 4.38. Okay. So. Professor, is in that case? KD? Uh, where? That one is not, not like in the beginning. Here? Yes, is in that KD? Oh, um, yes, so I derived it as KD equals, oh yeah, you're right, so this is KD. Um, ND, since K equals N phi over L, ND is 6N over pi, one third of that. Good catch, thank you. So equation 4.38 is either one of these, right? They are the same. All right, so we have this equation over here, the uh, energy. going to rewrite it in terms of n. So again, kn is n pi over l. So it's going to be three l over pi cubed, one over eight or pi integral from zero, and now this is gonna be nd. Uh, k squared is gonna be n squared pi over L squared. dk is gonna be dn pi over L. And then the energy um, I'm going to put it right now as that. And, you know, we can see that we can get rid of the L over pi with these ones. So I'm going to erase them and put the DN over here. Um, and then this is going to be one half, and we can get rid of 
that one. So this is three halves. We have the three over here. pi over 2. Now I'm going to write the energy. It's going to be h bar omega over the exponent of h bar omega over tau minus 1, just like before. Okay, so this one is equation 4.40, right? So <clears throat> the assumption that we made before in the case of light was that omega equals um, CK, right? So K is the, the wave vector or wave number. Omega is the angular frequency. And C was what? Speed of light. So the relationship between the wave number and the frequency in light is the speed of light. So the this is not quite true in solids, but it is what we're going to assume. And we I talked about it last time. We're gonna say that the frequency, the proportionality constant between the angular frequency and the wave number is the speed of sound, V. This is true for low frequencies, okay? So for light, the relationship always looks like that. And the slope is C, the speed of light. For sound, or for waves in solids, this looks like this. Okay, so at low wavelengths, I mean long wavelengths, high frequency, low frequency, um, it is a linear relationship. As you go to higher frequencies, this starts to become like more flat. It's okay, we're gonna consider the, the low frequency limit. So omega equals V K and K equals um, N pi over L. Yeah. So I'm going to substitute this omega over here. So this is going to be h bar v n pi over l, also over here. v n pi over L tau minus one. All right, so this is um, kind of what we did before, except that the dispersion relationship is a little different. So we can rewrite the, U, the energy. Is going to be three 
I squared. Actually, I'm going to maybe 3 I over 2. And then we can take everything out that is not uh, N. That's going to be H bar V I over L. Okay. Um, right. And then Actually, I can put n cubed over there. So we're going to make a few substitutions. Just like before, we want x to be this thing over here, so we can simplify that uh, that exponential. So x is going to be h bar v n pi over L tau. So this implies that I put over here N is X L tau divided by H bar V I. And that means that dn is dx l tau over h bar v i. Okay, so we can rewrite this equation in terms of x. It will start to look a little prettier. Actually, it will look uglier before it looks prettier. So U, we have this stuff over here. Three pi squared H bar V over two L integral from zero to N D. dx l tau over h bar v i, that's the dn, and then the n cube x l tau over h bar omega v i cubed, n cubed. Um, one over exponent of x minus one. So we are repeating what we did before with the with the black body. Okay, so where am I? So we take everything out, all the constants. It's gonna be 
3 pi squared h bar b divided by 2l uh, over there everything here is the same except for the x so we can take it out as tau l divided by h bar v i that's going to be to the fourth power integral from zero to n d dx x cubed divided by exponent of x minus one. Okay. Uh, this is equation 4.41. Does it look familiar? Should be. How does it look like? Something that we have seen before. Like, it looks like the one that we did with the body, black body radiation, the only difference is the NN. It goes the, with the black body goes to infinity and this one just go to ND. Correct. So, um, actually, uh, we need one more thing. So this limit, nd, should actually be xd because this, this is an integral of x. So let's do that. Uh, there's another, well, I guess you mentioned it. It's kind of bad. So before we were able to solve this integral because this went to infinity, but now it doesn't go to infinity. So that's going to be more difficult. Okay, so x, uh, well, we have it over here, what x is. So that means that xd is going to be h bar v and d i over L tau. So ND um, well, XC L tau over H bar V pi. So that limit should be X. Okay, so we are going to define uh, a quantity that is useful in this model. So I need some space. So we had, we have this um, from before. And the is six N divided by pi to the one third. So that means that XD over here is h bar v pi over l tau 6n over pi to the one third
So we can put this pi Uh, inside the cube root as pi cubed. And we can put the L inside the cube root as uh, L cubed. And L cubed is the volume. Okay, so we have H bar speed of sound divided by the temperature, six pi squared, N divided by the volume to the one third. This is equation 4.42. So usually, Put it over here. I don't want to erase the rest. Usually, XD is written as uh, pi, not pi, theta over temperature, and that's also equal to theta. KV divided by tau. You can see this still, right? Yep. So theta is known as the uh, the by temperature. So this is equation uh, 4.43. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what the divide temperature is, um, but I want to write it over here in terms of everything else. As you do the algebra, putting in what uh, xd is. Theta is going to be h bar, h bar v over kb. Six pi squared n over v. One third. Okay. So now this XD over here is going to be theta, the divide temperature, divided by the real temperature. Actually, the the conventional temperature, okay? This one has units of Kelvin. Okay, so, let's look at the units of theta. Each bar, is joules times seconds. The speed of sound is meters per second. And KV is joules per Kelvin. And inside 
Um, n is just a number, the number of particles. Uh, 6 pi squared is a constant. So we have the volume, which is meter, meters cubed. Um, the one third. So then this is just meters. Okay, and this one is, we can put the Kelvin over here and the joules over here. And so with these meters, we can put it over here. And so these cancel out and we end up with Kelvin. So theta is a temperature. But remember that a temperature is just the average energy, right? So if you didn't divide by the KB, then this will be in terms of the fundamental temperature, which is in, in joules. In that case, we wouldn't have the, uh, this joule and this Kelvin. So it will be an energy. Anyways, where am I going with this? What is the divide temperature? Well, it's over here in the limit. What was this limit before? Okay, so we, we decided that it could not be infinity. What was it? Alejandro, what was it? Well, the number of modes? Uh -uh. The limit. Yeah. Isn't it like the number of modes we just to be at the end MD? That was the whole thing. So this could go to infinity in the case of the black body radiation, because there is no limit to the maximum frequency of a photon. So the frequency can be you know as small as you want. In the case of a solid, the frequency has a limit. That limit is dictated by the separation between the atoms, right? The wavelength cannot be shorter than the separation between atoms. So the limit was the most energetic wave in the solid, the most energetic phonon. The limit is the same thing. We're just expressing it differently. So theta, the divide temperature gives you the energy or the temperature, the energy of the most energetic phonon in the solid. It has some important characteristics. What do you need to measure to calculate the divide temperature of a material? you need to measure? Do you know H bar? Yes. yes. It's a constant. Do you know KB? Yes. Do you know 6 and pi squared? Yes. 
What do you need to measure? The speed of sound and the number density. Those two quantities in the, the by model, those two quantities tell you what is the frequency of the most energetic phonon in the material. Which is pretty remarkable because you can go to the lab and measure those two things. So by measuring two macroscopic quantities, you can know something about the microscopic properties of the material. Okay, so There's a figure in Kittel. It's figure 4.1. 4 it has the divide temperatures of different elements. Which element has the highest divide temperature? You have the book over there, George. What element is it? Is it tungsten? What is tungsten? Tungsten is uh, omega in W? Is it? Yes, yeah. it's a W. And what is the the um, the divide temperature of tungsten? Is... What is it? I can't say I got that from the book. I just Googled it. Oh. And what does Google say? Mm. What is uh -huh. carbon. Okay, carbon. What is carbon? 2,630. 2,630 Kelvin. What about tungsten? It's kind of in the middle, low, like. It's like one of the key metals. Yeah, I think Google's wrong. It's the abbreviation of W? Hmm? The short W? Just W? I mean, Google can be wrong sometimes, but, you know, Kittel was written in 1980. Um, People probably knew enough about tungsten, but maybe things have changed a little. Okay, what about the least one, the, the lower lowest uh, the by temperature? The first one in the fifth row, um, CS. CCM? Yes. What is the temperature? At 38. 38? Oh, wow. That's really low. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. So that's good to know. We're going to um, talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. So keep this in the back of your, of your mind. What we're going to do now is So uh, I guess I just wanted to say this before. Could I have a quick question? Yes. I guess maybe I just didn't understand very well, but what, what does knowing the frequency of, of the most energetic uh, photon in that material tell us though? What, what, 
I guess maybe why would an experimentalist or something like that want to want to measure something like that? Because um, you know, we're not going to we're not going to go into detail in this course about this, but um, there's something called the phonon density of states. So for a normal metal, it's going to look like this, kind of like that. Um, you have the two transverse modes and the longitudinal. And this is the number of phonons that you have as a function of the energy and split each of omega. So um, the divide temperature tells you what the cutoff energy is over here. And um, back in the day, this was um, almost as sophisticated as you could get with the density of states of materials. So uh, if you integrate this with some probability function, which is the, uh, it's actually the Planck distribution, and this is called G of H bar omega, the, the multiplicity, this gives you the vibrational entropy of the material. And remember that nature minimizes the free energy, which is U minus T sigma. So the two main contributions to the entropy are the configurational entropy and the vibrational entropy. And the vibrational entropy by far, you know, well, it's, it's like five to 10 times bigger than the configurational entropy. So being able to know or knowing the divide temperature allows you to estimate the vibrational temperature, which allows you to estimate the free energy, which allows you to predict the phase stability of materials. So it was a big deal. Now we have more sophisticated ways of, of, of computing these things. But you know, this has huge historical importance. Yeah, that, that's a really good question. Oh, I see. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's consider uh, the limit, the low temperature limit in which you know, temperature goes to zero. In this limit, the XD, which is theta over tau, goes to infinity, right? So if XD goes to infinity, then this thing goes to infinity. And now, magic, we solved this integral before. It's uh, i to the fourth divided by 15. So in the low temperature limit, we can get u uh, exactly. It's going to be 3 pi squared h bar v out to the fourth l to the fourth i to the fourth divided by 2l i to the fourth h bar to the fourth v to the fourth 15. okay so we can Cancel out a bunch of things over there. This is going to be equal to uh, three i squared tau four v. So this l is going to cancel this one of these ones. So you get l cubed, and that's a volume divided by 
30 h bar q v q speed of sound q so then um, we can get rid of this one and just put a 10 over here and we can put this volume down here, dividing. Okay. So we have theta over here. So theta cubed is h bar cubed v cubed kb cubed. Okay, let me know if you can still see this. Okay, so we get rid of that cubic root. Um, so if we move this KB cube over here, and divide by six pi squared N, we get h bar cube v cube over the volume, which is this quantity that we have over here. Yeah. So we can replace that one. By kb cubed theta cubed, and then this one says these ones are dividing, so we can put them up here, multiplying. All right. So half of this one is three, and half of this one is five. All right. So we're almost there. Mm. So you want to keep this one in here, so I'll put it over here. So U is three pi to the four N out to the four divided by five KB theta cubed. Okay, this is equation four point forty six. So this is the total energy of a solid in the low temperature limit. I guess I might have to break this one again later. You can also write, write it in terms of the, uh, so this is the fundamental temperature instead of, uh, in terms of the conventional temperature, um, I'll give you three pi to the fourth and KB. So you're gonna put KB here, KB T to the fourth. So you get four of these at the temperature divided by five KB to the cube beta uh, cube. So you can get rid of this one and this one. And you get it in terms of the conventional temperature. All right. Like how low is the temperature? Hey, is it like five Kelvins? I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. 
the short answer is depends on the on the divide temperature, right? Because we're in this limit. So if the temperature is much greater than the divide temperature, sorry, uh, much lower than the divide temperature, then you are in this regime. But the divide temperature is different for different elements. All right. So what this is telling you, I guess the, the, the right way to understand this, you have your solid. And this solid can have every vibration. I guess up to the, the smallest, the, the separation between atoms. If your energy is really low, um, is the, if the temperature is really low, then the energy of the, of the vibrations is gonna be low. And because of the Boltzmann distribution, you know, which looks kind of like this, um, it tells you that at low temperatures, actually at the lowest temperature at zero Kelvin, all the vibrations are going to be in their, in their lowest energy. So uh, if all the vibrations are in their lowest energy, none of them is going to be close to being um, you know, close to KD. And so that's why you can replace it with the, with the infinity. What is the definition of heat capacity? Uh, constant volume specifically. And the energy necessary to raise uh, one kilo, one to one Kobe? One gram to one coding to the middle. Yeah, it's raise it for one degree. Yeah, that is correct. I think the nicer way to say it is that CV is the partial derivative of the energy, internal energy, with respect to tau at constant volume. If you are trying to determine CV, then you do, um, you, know, you have to measure the mass and see how the, the temperature rates and everything. Um, but this is the definition of the heat capacity. So we have the, the energy and you know, the heat capacity is gonna be derivative with respect to tau of this thing over here. So everything is a constant, except for the tau. So the heat capacity is going to be three pi to the fourth n divided by five kb theta cubed. Uh, four tau cube. So, is that written? Yes. So we can just put a 12 over here. And this tau, we can put it inside this cubed. So tau divided by kb theta cubed. We can also put just the, if you want to leave it in conventional temperature, it will be T over here. Actually, let's leave it as tau over. I mean, T over the theta. Q. 
cube. Okay, so the heat capacity at low temperature goes as the cube of the ratio between the temperature and the divide temperature. I'm not really good at drawing um, cubes. It's supposed to be kind of flat over here and then just go up very quickly. Is that right? Have you seen the low temperature heat capacity of materials before? Have you seen the same Huh? Could you repeat that? Oh, uh, I don't think so. Okay. So this is called the Dubai heat cube law. Okay, so um, there were actually two problems, not just one problem with classical physics at the end of the 19th century. One problem was the ultraviolet catastrophe that we saw before that classical physics predicted that the black body radiation just went to infinity, well, at infinite energy. And so the total energy was infinite, obviously wrong. The other problem was the observation that at low temperature, the heat capacity of materials goes to zero. Um, classical mechanics predicts that it is a constant. So actually, let's look at that case very quickly. I have to hurry up a little. So keep this one in mind. So as the temperature goes to infinity, this thing goes to zero. And so we have, you know, the integral xd. Um, xd matters actually a little bit because it's going to go to zero. Um, but to, that's a, a second order effect. The first order effect is that we have to the x minus one. So if x goes to zero, then e to the x is approximately one plus x. Um, actually, we had, uh, uh, yeah, we have the x cubed over here. Okay, so then we can replace this one by one plus x. We have the ones that go away. Uh, now we have x cubed divided by x. So this is x squared. And of course we have the x. So this integral is just gonna be x d cubed over three. And we have you know, all the other constants outside. So all those other constants where Then we have the integral over here, which is xd cubed divided by three. So we know what xd is. Mm. It's gonna look kind of ugly, but everything is going to cancel out. So you have 
tau to the fourth L cube H bar cube B cube I cube six N divided by two pi squared H bar cube V cubed L cubed tau cubed I. So this one cancels out here, this one with this one, this one with this one, this one with this one, uh, square and one and cube, this one with this two. Uh, this becomes a three. So this is equal to three N tau. Okay, so if we take the heat capacity, Cv is the derivative with respect to temperature of this thing, which is just 3n. Okay, so at low temperature, the heat capacity goes as the cube. In the high temperature limit is a constant. Okay, this constant is 3n. Um, you have three degrees of freedom for each, for each particle, and that's the heat that they can that they can take. In the high temperature limit, the Boltzmann distribution looks is almost like a constant, and so all the energy levels are occupied and have the same energy. So the Equipartition theorem holds. This limit is called the Toulon and Petit limit. And it has been known since like 1820 or something, very long time ago. So The heat capacity of a material as a function of the temperature looks like this. Okay, so this is temperature divided by theta and this is 3n. Actually, if you take the specific heat capacity, so you divide by the number of particles, this is 3. Isn't that pretty? Very pretty. Thank you. That's the correct answer. <laughs> okay, so. Every material, every solid shows this curve for the heat capacity. So uh, here we're looking at the Debye the model, but the first, the first model that successfully reproduced the, this behavior that the heat capacity goes to zero at zero Kelvin you know who came up with that model? Can you repeat that again, please? Yes. We looked at the, the by model and it shows you that this is the heat capacity of a solid. Um, this was not the first model that was successful at showing that the heat capacity goes to zero at zero Kelvin, which is an experimental result that theoreticians will not explain 
at the end of the 19th century. What was that model, the first one that showed these? Well, I was reading the homework in the in the person that, that says in the homework is Einstein, right? Einstein did it. Uh. So, um, Planck show that if you quantize the system, then you get the correct distribution for radiation. He did it in like 1900, 1901. Um, Einstein took Planck's idea and applied it to solids. And you have been working with it. It's called the Einstein model or the Einstein solid. It's, it's a little bit simpler than, than the Debye model, but it gives you the correct, it shows you that if you quantize the heat capacity goes to, to zero. So Planck is to radiation as Einstein is to matter. Einstein was truly, truly remarkable. You know, you, you hear all the time about his uh, general gravitation or um, Einstein relativity, but his contributions to the development of quantum mechanics and, and solid state physics are, you know, are gigantic. So uh, the by I, Einstein knew in 1906, 1907, when he published this stuff, he knew that his model was too simplistic. He assumed that the, the atoms oscillate independently of the other atoms. But he published it anyways because he thought that it was important enough, and of course it was, to show that quantization uh, gives you the correct heat capacity. So Debye uh, worked out this model in like 1912, and for a very long time was the, um, I mean, people still use it, people still use the Debye model. But for a very long time, you know, many decades, it was kind of the only model. So the last thing that I want to show is these curves are general, as I mentioned. Every material follows the same curve. The only difference is the, the divide temperature. So, 50, 100, oh, 100, 200. This is the temperature in Kelvin. And this is the heat capacity specific. So, I have a plot that I got from the internet. I'm going to try to draw it. So one, two, and three. So we have one curve, it looks like this. Okay, this is the heat capacity for lead. Plumbum, which has a, a divide temperature of 105 Kelvin. And this one is a little bit more intricate.
looks a little bit like this. And this is the, you know, it just continues going up. This is the heat capacity of aluminum, which has a device temperature of 428 Kelvin. All right, so um, the heat capacity of aluminum is lower than the heat capacity of lead because it can, um, because it's, most energetic phonon has a higher energy than lead. And so this part you know, looks more like the cubic part rather than the high temperature limit. Lead has a very low divide temperature. And so it reaches the high temperature limit very quickly at like, you know, by, by 100 Kelvin, it's already at three kV per atom, sorry, three, um, yeah, three kb per atom. Whereas for aluminum, you probably have to go to like 500 or something uh, Kelvin to reach the high temperature limit. So you're just, you, you can squeeze, make, make it narrower or make it wider, but all of the materials have this shape. Um, with some differences as we, might, as, as we will see later. So over here, it's gonna be a little different if it's a metal or an insulator. Um, and by measuring the heat capacity at low temperature, you can measure things like uh, electrical resistivity, uh, number of electrons at the Fermi level, things like that. So this is, you know, um, heat capacity measurements are um, one of the Workhorses of uh, you know, thermodynamics and and uh, and materials. All right, so I'm going to stop over here. Next time we're going to start chapter five, which is chemical potential. Questions or anything? No. I'm going to stop recording.